All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Cami Gildner, who is in Colorado. How are you doing, Cami? I am great, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and absolutely. And Cami is the founder of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference, Extraordinary Women Connect Events and Extraordinary Women uh, radio, he believes women voices matter. You're a connector, a storyteller, a business coach for for change maker, women of influence. And what we're going to talk about today, Cami, which is fantastic, is the five rules of marketing that you need to break. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm excited about this one. You know, has seen as marketing falls under my bailiwick time. So, um, so uh, Cami, let's get straight into it. What are the five rules? Okay, let's get into it. Well, what I would love to say is that I, I am actually very trained in marketing. That was my original background. I was in 20 plus years as a, as a marketer in the corporate world. So I, I was classically trained in marketing. And today I'd love to throw out a lot of those rules that, that, we, that I learned in business school and really turn marketing on its head to be in a much more connected state with our our people that we serve in our community. So the first one is building our marketing from the inside out. And that means really finding that clarity of who you are as a marketer, mm -hmm. um, as, as, a, as a person and building a brand from the inside out, um, from the essence of who you are. And so that's the very first one. And, and let's on that for a moment, though. Um, so how what, what is the kind of process you can go through to figure that out? Because I often feel like, uh, you know, especially when the people are solopreneurs or whatever, or they go out is that they don't spend a lot of time figuring out who they are, or whatever. They just think, OK, I mean, they're excited to go. They're passionate. They're talented. They just kind of go with it. And then sometimes, obviously, there's a kind of a silence. <laughs> and you right. wonder why. And, and so they're trying to find where they want to go. And they try mm -hmm. to look at everything from the outside. And they try to look at everybody else. What's everybody else doing mm -hmm. in marketing? And so the way I actually start my clients is, is by really helping them tune into the essence of who they are. That means their strengths, their passions, their values. It means going out and hearing stories from people that are in their communities and listening how people have seen them and what light they've seen them in so it really is a it's a a pause before you jump into the marketing on mm -hmm. who am i at my very core because this if you if you start your marketing from that space it gets into the second piece the second um rule to break is there's no such thing as competition because guess what there is no there's no one just like you there's no mm -hmm. one who has your same gifts and talents and experiences and stories and life, all that you've journeyed through, that is just like you. There's no one just like you. So when you build your brand from the inside out, you, you basically maneuver out of the competition. Yeah, I, I used to say, I used to joke sometimes with them in another company, I ran a while back where I used to say, you know, put on, we're the best at what we do. And somebody used to say, well, how can we prove that? And I said, well, we're the best at what we do. Nobody else does it exactly the way we do. Therefore, we are the best at what we do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's really funny as a, as a you know, a marketer from executive marketer from all those years ago, I would have never told you 15 years ago that you just throw out all the competition. We always were mm -hmm. digging into the competition. And today I tell my clients, that's not where you, it's like, we don't really care. It's like, fine, let's find you. Uh, so why, you why, yeah. So why is that so important? Because I mean, as you said, like people find that so counterintuitive and probably why before they're even deciding what business they're going to do, whatever they're going and they're looking at all the other people who are doing it and the competition and saying, okay, how do I differentiate myself? Or maybe I want to be a little bit more like them. How do you help them through that process? Well, I help them through that process of, of, you know, the, the no competition piece by, you have to really get out of your head. I mean, I, so often when we're in, as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, as a service oriented marketer, we're in our head and we're telling these stories of, you know, oh my gosh, look what they've done in their, their career, right? And it's like, you get into the whole world of comparisonitis and that's really what can slow a marketer down when they're when they're really looking at all the people around them and saying, oh, my gosh, you know, look what they're doing. How can I possibly do what I do? 
and and then you and they pull back right so energetically they pull back into a different space mm -hmm. and um you know it's just it's a way to to help them through mindset challenges as well yeah no it's 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 very it's very interesting what you do what you said there about the comparison thing because we do live unfortunately in a culture of comparison mm -hmm. and once upon a time you you wouldn't have been able to compare yourself to death the way you can now right because oh, right. there's so much information Social. out there and you can still keep going and you can still learn more so i think that's a really a really important point because i do think uh, comparison can can paralyze us mm -hmm. it can send us down the wrong track i think going back to your first point is it's all rooted in in figuring out who you are and what you're what you're bringing to the world and yeah i agree i think the the constant looking at at com and constant comparisons and whatever I can, I think are quite debilitating. Right, right. And so, you know, that whole first part that we've talked about is that inside outside or inside out approach, but you do have to look the outside in as well. And this gets into the third point. And the third point is this, and this is around how we speak our clients love language. How do we learn to speak what it is that they're desiring? And the, the rule that we break on this is to stop the pain-based, scarcity-focused messaging that is so prevalent in the world of, of marketing. And it doesn't mean that we don't have to know and understand what the challenges are, what's that pain that person is going through, but we don't have to lead with all of the ugliness of, of taking somebody down to, you know, it's like just adding to self-doubt, adding to, you know, pulling somebody down. And as, you know, as a business coach, I want to be uplifting people. I want people to be able to see possibilities. And so I, I, I take my clients through a, an approach that's called, um, it is called speak your client's love language. So it's a tool, but it's, it's basically a spreadsheet. So I'll give this for your, for your listeners here, three columns. First column is what's that thing that keeps them awake at night, the pain, the challenge that they've got. You've got to understand it. The second column is what's the emotions associated with that. And when, you know, we're, we're, we're listening to them, we're having these conversations, we're, we're, we're capturing that. But the, the third column is our magic column. And that's where we get into what is it that they truly aspire to? What do they desire? Because if we really listen to what they're aspiring to and what they're desiring, and we start to leverage some of that language, the language that they speak to us, mm -hmm. we learn to speak our clients' love language. And that turns marketing on its head from it all needs to be focused on the pain. And, and that's, that's the third one that we, we really dig into yeah. on that. Yeah. And again, I think I think coming out of, of the pandemic and all the craziness and everything that's happened in the world, I think people are ready for that. That's that, that seems to me it's a more uplifting and aspirational and, and positive message to bring out to your point. Yeah, you, obviously, you know what the pain points are, but if you're able to capture, as you said, the desires, the aspirational language of, of, of your clients, and that's obviously going to resonate more. It is. And I, I mean, I think when I've, whenever I've invested in my own self, in my own business, I have always invested in what the possibility was, not because mm -hmm. I was fearful that if I don't invest, that something's going to, you know, break, yeah. the wheel's going to fall off, whatever that looks like. That's not what gets me to move. What gets me to move is like, oh my gosh, there's this whole new possibility that I could, that I wasn't even seeing for myself. And that's really what I want to help my clients see. Great. Perfect. Great. So what's number four? Number four is to throw out all the formulas. Anybody that tells you that there's five steps or seven steps, 10 steps to whatever, um, it's, it's, it's full of malarkey. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, business is a, it's a journey that we go on and there is no magic formula that's out there. And if you're building your brand from the inside, you're building your marketing from the inside out, that means that you're looking at marketing through a much more strategic approach than the, you know, here's the, the, the exact formulas you need to follow to make this work. Yeah. And again, I mean, that's obviously, I mean, there's a reason why people latch onto them because that's what we want, you know, as, as human nature, you know, we want, oh, cool. There's a three-step process and everything's good. If there's a five-step process, everything's good. But to your point is, 
um, these these journeys are not linear ever, no. and they're not like s- sequential the way these formulas would like to have you believe. Right, they're not, and it's you know being an entrepreneur has a, a messy road to it, but it's a wonderful, joyous journey that we go on. And it, like you said, it's not linear. It's it's an evolution. We we grow, we we evolve, we expand. All the pieces come together bit by bit, but it's we could never predict okay here's the the five things that we need to do to make the next level of success and i think the other thing too is just the the patience level um in terms of i always think that people get very impatient like you know you go through a marketing process or launch a new marketing campaign or whatever and if there's not instantaneous or or semi-instantaneous results it's always like oh well that didn't work but but the way the world is today, and as we said, with all the noise, you have to, I mean, you have to tweak it as you go, you have to adjust, but you've also got to give it the time to be, to, to have the impact. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and know that you're learning every step of the way. I mean, that's part of the, the fun of being an entrepreneur is, is there's always this stretch and this growth that you're taking every time you're, you're, you know, stepping into something new and bigger there's growth, there's stretching, there's evolution. And it's one of the biggest personal journeys that we can ever go on is, is to, to really be, an, well, to be an entrepreneur is to, to, you just find a whole different level of, of growth and expansion. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And so number five. Number, number five is to say no to the hustle. Find mm-hmm. the flow. And really the hustle is, that puts us into a very um, linear approach again. And it doesn't mean that you don't work hard, you do, but, but if you are getting in alignment with the work that you're meant to be putting into the world, if you're in alignment with who you are as at that essence of you, if you're building your marketing from that inside out, you start to get into a flow. The universe is like, yep, this person is in alignment with what they're meant to do. And you will start attracting more of the right people into your business. You will attract more of the right opportunities into your business. And it's, taking that time for ourselves. And I think part of it is because we are, it is such a big personal growth journey for us as entrepreneurs that when we, when we, when we are taking care of ourselves first and staying in alignment with how we're meant to make a difference in the world, we, we start to build businesses that are much more in a flow state than a a, a hustle state. Yeah. And, and let's face it. I mean, the hustle is kind, kind of addicting in its own way, isn't it? So, I mean, and the whole activity and being totally. busy and being totally like immersed in things. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, and I say this because that's, you know, I came out the corporate world where that was, and then that was 12, 13 years ago that I came out of the corporate world, but I can still catch myself into that. Do, do, do. I know how to do and get things done. And it's not when the best expansion happens for me when I can when I can actually be much more in alignment, make the time and space for myself. I find that my business flows much more strongly, and my growth happens much more rapidly than when I get into just doing all the time because I miss some of the the clues and the insights that cut, drop in for me. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely true. I mean, when you're when you're in hustle mode and when you're all activity and to do lists and just get cranking through things and trying to, I mean, I think, and you're also trying to maybe lead by example about like, oh, go, go, go. Yeah. But you end up, but in many ways, then you end up creating a culture of kind of chaos in many ways. Exactly. And, exactly. and most of us became entrepreneurs, not because we wanted to, re, you know, recreate that that lifestyle that we had in the corporate world, but really to create an impact with the work that we can that we do. Yeah, and it's obviously extremely important. Uh, I mean, because you referenced this a number of times, but it's extremely important for the, for people to look after themselves. And I think that's that's something that I know some people struggle with because they they think, well, you know, I should be serving everything else. I should, you know, I put myself second. I need to support everything to get this business and going and all of that. Um, and that's kind of again, that's kind of almost what's expected of people. I think we have to turn that on its head a little bit and say. Um, you know, unless you focus on yourself and develop yourself and put yourself in a good state, there's no there's no chance of you being there's no real chance of you being successful in the long term, but impacting people in the way you want to if you burn yourself out. Exactly, exactly. And I think there's this whole world of mental fitness. How do we stay really at the top of our game mentally it means that we have to take care of our bodies first. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think that's another that's another important thing, because I, I think that's a thing that gets lost a lot, again, as we said, in the in the hustle. And mm-hmm. all of that is that your physical and mental well-being have a direct impact on your on your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, we are we are the business, you know, so often. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, then we can't be our best in our business. And I think when you're working with people, it's probably, I mean, that's probably one of the hardest things for, for them to even admit to themselves that sort of say, yeah, you know, things are overwhelming. I need to take, I need to do something different. I need to take care of myself. Things are just, it's too much. And I think that's, that's a kind of hard thing to admit to. Yeah. I mean, it can definitely be a hard thing to admit to, or it can just be the practice that you make that space on a daily basis. I know when I start my morning in a morning ritual with, with mindset time, with, with meditation, with movement, with journaling, with those sorts of things, when I start my days like that, I'm actually way more productive than if I just dive into the day without that pause in the morning. So that was something that was really counterintuitive for me at one point. And it was like, do I have time to do that today? And it was like, but wait a minute, I'm actually more productive when I make that kind of space for myself each day, that kind of a ritual. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. And I, I do think people should look at how they start their days because mm-hmm. it can have such a big, big impact on everything that comes after. Hey, but listen, uh, Cami, this has been fantastic. Uh, thank you for sharing those five rules of marketing you need to break. Um, if you want to just recap them one by one quickly for everyone. Okay, the first one is marketing from the inside out, build your, your, your brand, your marketing from the very inside out. So it's not from the outside in. The second one is that there's no such thing as competition. The third one is stop the pain-based scarcity marketing, just throw it out the door. The fourth one is um, throw out the formulas. And the fifth one is say no to the hustle. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Listen, this is great. All of Cami's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I'm a business coach. I am a connector. I'm a storyteller. And I help women influencers really raise up their voice and their visibility and grow their business to the next level. We've got um, all I've got a, a community called Extraordinary Women Connect, which is about connecting great women to great women. We do weekly podcast connector posts where people are where we're connecting great podcast guests to great podcast hosts. And um, the Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference is held every year in November. This year it's going to be back live again. It will be our seventh annual. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, that's fantastic news. Yeah, wow, live, live events know, with right? real people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. We, we took it virtual last year, which was fabulous. I was really pleased with it. And I'm so happy to be back live in November. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. People will be walking up to each other and then going, ooh, this is weird. Can we, yeah, hug? Why, Can we shake why hands? Are, yeah. <laughs> why aren't, why, how, come, how come we're not on Zoom? Right. Right. Well, hopefully yeah. we'll be all feeling a little <laughs> bit more comfortable at that point. Um, yeah, I know absolutely. every time that I'm getting in community now, I'm starting to just feel so. Oh, yeah. No, it is. It's starting to really feel yeah. like like the the good old days. All right. Well, listen, Cami, this is fantastic. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.